Good morning, Thomas McLaren School. Today, I want to tell you about Richard Robert Wright Sr. Richard Robert Wright Sr. was born into slavery in Georgia in 1855. After the Civil War ended in 1865, Wright was able to go to school at a school for freedmen, as you can see here. An old Union general visited the school and asked young Wright what message he wanted the general to take back to the North. Wright is reported to have said, Sir, tell them we're rising. Just think about that for a moment. Think about the courage and conviction and hope and dignity and fortitude of the boy who said that, just a few years removed from slavery. What message did he want brought back? Sir, tell them we're rising. And rise he did. He became a U.S. Army officer and paymaster. He founded multiple schools and was the president of a college. American presidents visited Major Wright to hear his thoughts on education. He was renowned for his intellect and his ideas. After all his accomplishments, he became interested in banking. He became a banking entrepreneur and started his own business. Wright founded his bank in 1921. Eight years later, in 1929, the stock market crashed and the Great Depression began. Thousands and thousands of banks collapsed in the Depression. That means the people who put their money in those banks lost all their savings. Billions of dollars vanished into thin air when the banks failed. But not Richard R. Wright's bank. His bank survived the Great Depression and only grew stronger. When it was sold in 1957, he had assets of $5.5 million. All his life, Major Wright was an advocate for civil rights. He was very interested in the moment that the country abolished slavery and made freedom for all people the law of the land, the passage of the 13th Amendment. He invited leaders from all around the country to Philadelphia, where he lived, to discuss making February 1st a special day in America to recognize the signing of the 13th Amendment. Unfortunately, he did not succeed, at least not in his lifetime. One year after Major Richard R. Wright Sr. died in 1947, both houses of the U.S. Congress passed a bill to make February 1st National Freedom Day. It was signed into law in 1948 by President Harry Truman. National Freedom Day was the forerunner to Black History Day and later Black History Month. Richard R. Wright Sr. was born into slavery and spent his early childhood in slavery, but lived his life as a free man. Thank you, Thomas McLaren. Have a good day. Dreamers by Seyfrey Sansun. Soldiers are citizens of death's gray land, drawing no dividend from time's tomorrows. In the great hour of destiny they stand, each with his feuds and jealousies and sorrows. Soldiers are sworn to action, they must win, some flaming fatal climax with their lives. Soldiers are dreamers when the guns begin. They think of firelit homes, clean beds, and wives. I see them in the foul dugouts, gnawed by rats and in the ruined trenches, lashed with rain, dreaming of the things they did with balls and bats, and mocked by hopeless longing to rain, bank holidays and picture shows and spats, and going to the office in the train. Solitude by Ella Wheeler Wilcox. Laugh and the world laughs with you, weep and you weep alone. For the saddle doth must follow its moth, but has trouble enough of its own. The echoes bound to a joyful sound, but shrink from voice and care. Rejoice and men will seek you, grieve and they turn and go. They want full measure of all your pleasure, but they do not need you well. Be glad and your friends are many, be sad and you lose them all. There are none to decline your nectared wine, but alone you must drink life's scale. 
Beast and your halls are crowded, fast and the wall the wall that goes by. Succeed and give and it helps you live. But no man can help you die. There's room in the halls of pleasure for a large and lordly train. But one by one we must all file on through the narrow aisles of pain. A Blessing by James Wright Just off the highway to Rochester, Minnesota, twilight bound softly forth in the grass, and the eyes of those two Indian ponies darkened with kindness. They, they have come gladly out of the widows to welcome my friend and me. We step over the barbed wire into the pasture where they have been grazing all day alone. They ripple tensely. They can hardly contain their happiness that we have come. They bow shyly as wet swans. They love each other. There is no loneliness like theirs. At home once more, they begin munching the young tufts of spring in the darkness. I would like to hold the slendered one in my arms, for she has walked over to me and nuzzled my right hand, for she is black and white and her mane falls wildly on her forehead. And the light breeze brings me to ca caress her long ear, which is as delicate as a girl's wrist. Suddenly I realize that if I were to break out into blossom, then or if I were to step out of my body, I would break into blossom. Stopping by the Woods on a Snowy Evening by Robert Frost Whose woods these are? I think I know. His house is in the village, though. He will not see me stopping here to watch his woods fill up with snow. My little horse must think it's queer to stop without a farmhouse near. The only between the woods and frozen lake, the darkness evening of the year. He gives his harness bells a shake and asks if there is some mistake. The only other sounds the sweep of easy wind and downy flake. The woods are lovely, dark and deep, but I must promise to keep and miles to go before I sleep. Miles to go before I sleep. Ardor by Sarah Teasdale. Life has loveliness to sell, all beautiful and splendid things. Blue waves whitened on a cliff, soaring fire that sways and sings, and children's faces looking up, holding wonder like a cup. Life has loveliness to sell, music like a curve of gold, scent of pine trees in the rain, eyes that love you, arms that hold, and for your spirit's still delight, holy thoughts that star the night. Spend all you have for loveliness, buy it and never count the cost. For one white singing hour of peace, count many a year of strife well lost. And for a breath of ec ecstasy, give all you have been or could be.